Today on Island Focus, you will enjoy meeting Dr. Sumner LaCroix, who is a research fellow with the University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization. Appreciate you being with us today, Sumner. Please uh, explain to us a little more what your role is as research fellow and what you hero is at the university and what it provides. You know, I'm, I'm a retired professor from the University of Hawaii Economics Department. I retired about three years ago. And uh, since then, I've been working with you, Hero, on a variety of economic projects that affect the Hawaii economy. In some cases, I put together interdisciplinary teams of people. For COVID-19, this is one of those cases. I've been working with a uh, public health expert from the East-West Center, Tim Brown, who's an expert in, in uh, looking at AIDS epidemics. And I've also been working with uh, Dr. DeWolf Miller, who's a retired professor of epidemiology at the Japson School of Medicine. And so the three of us looking at COVID, I think it's, it's a unique perspective because we have an economist who, who's, who's looking more at human behavioral issues. We have a public health expert who's skilled at looking at people's responses to epidemics. We have somebody who's really, um, who's really looking carefully at the data from the epidemic. This has been really fun working with an, interdis it, working with an interdisciplinary team. I think it's also helped inform our research a lot. So based on the research that you've been doing and also that Yohiro has been involved in, where are we now? We're in a perilous place because one quarter of the economy is shut down. That's the tourism sector. The tourism sector is responsible for 17% of the direct output in the Hawaii economy. There's another about 8% that's the spillovers from the tourism sector. So that's one quarter of the economy is not operating. Uh, if that continues, there's only, there's only just one word for what we'll have here. That's a depression. Right now, we've been supported by uh, federal aid that's brought in unemployment funds and uh, loans to small businesses. And that's kept us afloat. The decline in income hasn't been as big as the decline in output. But as that federal aid dries up, as that federal aid dries up, we're going to be in deep trouble unless we can get uh, the tourism economy restarted. So in addition to the tourism economy, there is a trajectory up. We can get out of this. Oh, I think there is, yes. I mean, there's also other parts of the local economy that need to be restarted. And the, it's the people that are involved. Right. And the well-being, not just the safety, but their preparation to go back to work. So what's happening is as we started to reopen, we turned out to be much like some other places in the United States, is that the epidemic resurged. We, we thought we had the epidemic under control at the end of May. We were getting just zero, one, two cases a day. We were all patting ourselves on the back, too, and I think rightly so. And then what happened is as we reopened, people let their guard down a bit. Um, they paid less attention to certain to, to certain behavioral metrics, to certain measures of behavior that they should have paid more attention to. And now we've seen a spike in new cases. So that as people are going back to work, they're left with really um, a feeling of nervousness and they're not quite sure what to do in the workplace because of the epidemic resurging in Hawaii. And what you said very clearly is we need to pay attention. What's really critical in opening tourism is that, is that people working in the tourism industry and the general public both believe that when tourists come here, it's going to be a safe operation, that most of the tourists coming here are relatively free of COVID. You can never say for sure about these things, but that we make efforts to basically try to screen out people who are actively infected with COVID. Tourists, when they come here, need to be saying, one of my prime goals when I come here is to have a good time. And the second goal of equal importance is to make sure that I haven't contributed to worsening the COVID epidemic in Hawaii. So let's broaden the conversation from tourism, because that's okay. one aspect of the economy. We also have our local agriculture, our small businesses. To help us understand the considerations we need to have regarding people's well-being and people's psychological, I guess, preparation to go back to work. I look at the episode that happened at Hawaiian Air the other day, where a training held here in Hawaii, where people came in from all over the country, ended up with over 40 people being infected with COVID. And, you know, I, I look back and I wonder um, what we've heard about that episode is that people started off using masks. And then as time went on, they, they, they basically re removed the masks. People started off social distancing, but they stopped social distancing. Hawaiian Air made a lot of efforts at the beginning to keep the areas really clean where they were training. Later, that kind of slacked off a bit. You know, I, I look at an episode like that and I think it's really instructive. And it's instructive because Hawaiian Air is a really good corporation, from my point of view. It's a responsible corporation. It does good work in the community, provides good air service. I know we're all cynical about the airlines, but it's a pretty good airline, okay? And it's a good corporation. And yet, their management really failed in this regard. What can we learn in terms of calming the waters 
so that when people do go back to work and we recover our economy and whatever it will look like. People need to be aware that others are listening to them. You know, they need to be aware that if they speak up and say, I don't think what's going on in my classroom is safe, that others are listening to them, that a school principal is saying, OK, we'll look at that. We'll pay attention. This is an environment where we have to be flexible. We have to listen to people. We have to take into account people's concerns because they're in very different situations. What I actually hear you saying is the importance of communication. Even the innuendos and the body language of employees as they come in, not whether they have a fever or a cough, but rather how are they navigating their own anxieties? You know, I, I think we have all the ingredients in place here to, to, to get the epidemic under control. A lot of it, though, is that there does need to be really good messaging on the part of everybody. You know, if we're talking about parents talking with their children, it needs to be good messaging. You know, they need to be really aware of, of what's happening. And the problem is those messages are going to change. What is reasonable today might not be reasonable tomorrow. You know, tomorrow we may be able to relax a bit or tomorrow we may, we may have to tighten up a bit on, on various restrictions. And this is a hard message to, to get across. In some sense, it's almost easier just to say, do this. And in this case, what we're left with is please pay attention because it's going to be changing over time. The good news is if we do pay attention, I'm, I'm really optimistic that Hawaii will get, its, will get its epidemic under control. Thank you, too, for tuning in to Island Focus and my conversation with Dr. Sumner LaCroix, who's a research fellow with the University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization. Aloha.